Hello everyone and today we are talking about Giardia duodenalis. Uh, right now in front of you I have a trichrome stain smear of a fecal specimen from a person with a Giardia infection and this is caused by a fecal oral route meaning that the person has swallowed this cyst in a uh, from contaminated food or water that was contaminated with um, fecal material with this organism in it, you can find um, this organism, which is a flagellated protozoa, um, you can find either the trophozoite or the cyst within uh, the, the fecal material given as a specimen. They are both diagnostic stages. What you see down at the bottom right hand uh, side of this cyst are four nuclei. Um, this organism, uh, cyst, is going uh, to be able to provide um, two trophozoites because uh, each trophozoite has two uh, nucleus or nuclei in it. Um, you can not really see the flagella all too well because um, they're tucked up in there. Uh, inside the organism and uh, inside the cyst, but you can kind of see uh, see the vertical line. That's really a disc. Um, so the remnants of the sucker disc, the ventral suc sucker disc that ends up uh, adhering the trophozoite to the um, epithelium of the intestinal villi. And uh, that is where it does its job. <laughs> And uh, it sloughs off basically like every 72 hours because your cells within the intestinal, uh, the gastrointestinal system are constantly regenerating because of how all that crazy movement that's happening in your GI tract. So like I said, this is a uh, trichrome stain smear. This is a cyst. Uh, I don't have any uh, trophozoites in this um, on the slide, but once a trophozo or the trophozoites come out of here, uh, out of the cyst, you would draw a line down the center, the vertical center, and they divide by binary fission. So they, um, you know, multiply um, or they double uh, their uh, organelles and they go ahead and divide by binary fission. This is a, um, an infection that happens usually uh, from about one to two, one day to two weeks, but it usually is about a week where you end up seeing any symptoms. Can last for one to three weeks. You'll have uh, diarrhea, abdominal pain, bloating, nausea, vomiting, all that wonderfulness. Um, and there can be a chronic infection, and the the symptoms uh, would be recurrent and obviously malabsorption and dehabilitation may occur in that situation. So although a cyst or a trophozoite may be found in as diagnostic in the uh, fecal material um, or in a specimen, uh, the cyst is what cause is the infective stage. So the cyst is a very um, hardy and able to survive several months um, in a harsh environment like cold water. And it's because it's got this thick wall on the outside, this protective wall. Um, so we're going to go ahead and make the wet prep like you've seen in another video before and show you the difference. I did choose to add iodine. So that's why uh, this looks very yellowy the way that it does. You can see uh, so this is a fecal concentration uh, technique already done specimen stool. So you can see all of the stool components within here. I'm on 10 right now, 10x, and now I'm on high. So this is 40x. You can see uh, bacteria jumping around, swimming around. Um, and we're going to go ahead and uh, look for some... Giardia cyst. I used iodine to hopefully help us see that a little bit better. And we had 
several in here before. I just want to make sure you can see very well. So you can see there's a lot of material in here. And they are very hard to find. Okay, so uh, that is why the trichrome stain is the best, the best technique to use because they're very easily missed. going in and out as we're looking. That right there, that yellowy piece here at the end of my pointer looks like it might be uh, endoepithelial cell from the intestine possibly. So you can see, um, you can see squamous cells, epithelial cells. These are plant fibers. I'll put them on 10 so you can see that better. All right. <clears throat> well, that looks rather large. Let's take a look at that. That's quite literally just a piece of fecal material. Okay, so just to let you know, these are not very large. So you saw uh, with magnification of my phone and and the uh, microscope to see how small they really are. So let's talk about how small they are while we're looking. They The cysts are about the size of a white blood cell. So if you see some cells that look like a white blood cell, it might be them. They are kind of ovoid. So kind of like that guy right there. But I don't know that I can definitively tell you that. It's so junky. We had a hard time in class finding this too. Uh, and it's even harder with my phone. So here, that might be one. That might be one over there too. Let's see. I'm not so sure that that would be it. It kind of gets grainy with my phone. So we might actually be looking at one right now. <laughs> Um, the circular piece there, um, there, they are kind of ovoid or a little more circular. I would honestly say this looks more like one. Let's see. Well, quality of video is not very good and I can't see it with my own eyeballs because the phone's in the way. But once again, this is why we choose to use the trichrome stain, uh, because the stain absolutely helps. All right, off the video, I'm going to try to find one because this video is getting kind of long. Okay, well, the two that I have right here 
next to my pointer that look very similar. Our, our sum, there are two right there. It's just, I don't know why you can't see it so well on my phone. Um, so I'm sorry, but I'm trying my best here. But they're cis, right? So they've got the same look that the trichrome stained it, except they're just not stained. Okay, so um, like I said, even when you just have your eyeballs, it's kind of hard. But you can see two nucle uh, nuclei right there at the edge of the end of my pointer and that oval one down there and some internal structures as well. So that is a, that's a Giardia lamnia cis, lamnia cis. And all this bacteria is going around and just having a heyday. Um, so that's it. We also have other particles in here. Uh, when I did the breaking of the, uh, the glass ampule in the iodine that uh, sent some glass in here. So if we zoomed out, see these kind of look like them too right there they're not very much stained though with the iodine um, but if we zoomed out you would be able to see a lot of glass shards in here not too many some of my students got like really excited and were um, there was glass everywhere <laughs> it was so great um, but you can see that there are other, um, other fecal material, uh, which it would include like plant material and stuff that could make it very hard to find, uh, organisms. So again, this was a fecal concentration technique. We've seen some yeast, we've seen some bacteria, we've seen some plant matter, and we've seen some giardia. Oh, is that a good one? I didn't mean to go that way. Go the other way. Right there. That looks like that's another one, too. Again, sorry for the bad clarity on my phone. All right. So that's the end of this video. So just to give you a little bit more information, the organisms feed on the mucosal secretions um, of the... Uh, of the intestine. They don't actually go into the mucosa. So you may need to um, analyze up to like six stool specimens because they stay sucked to the, uh, the villi of the intestine and uh, therefore they might be not be actively uh, excreted. There are immunoassays uh, you can use the string test if you're having trouble trying to find them. Um, and uh, sometimes there is mucosal invasion, but that's really when the mucosa itself was already um, uh, already destroyed in some way through like necrosis or a mechanical um, mechanical um, type of trauma. Okay, so if you would like to see more types or more of these types of videos, please like and subscribe and uh, set your notifications so anytime there's a new video, you'll be able to see it. Thank you, and I'll see you next time. Bye.